all across America, in our cities and in our towns. Many of the streets are empty. Memorial Day is usually a time for marching, gathering, and spending time with loved ones. Because coming together to commemorate the fallen is an act of humanity. It's ingrained in our history and in our hearts. And even though right now many of us cannot be together, we can still salute together. And our military heroes will know that we honor them. Thank you so much for joining us for our very special Memorial Day Parade of Heroes. Today, we remember those who sacrificed their lives to secure our freedom. As we mark this Memorial Day, during an unprecedented moment in our history, we invite you and your families to commemorate from home and show your appreciation to all our men and women in uniform and their loved ones who dedicate their lives to our safety and security. To you all, as well as to the heroes on the front lines today of our latest battle, we thank you with all our hearts. Once known as Decoration Day, Memorial Day was first proclaimed in 1867, two years after the end of the Civil War. General John Logan asked Americans to decorate the graves of any soldiers who had died protecting their country. While our nation currently faces a new adversity, all over America, there are still acts of kindness and an abundance of hope, and freedom is ringing its bell as loud as ever. And in 2020, Memorial Day has an even more special significance. 75 years ago, on September 2nd, 1945, World War II finally came to an end. My father served in the Navy during World War II. His stepfather and older brother never came home and his remaining brother was wounded. And after that, my father was stationed in Paris, France at Shape headquarters, where he served on General Eisenhower's staff. I'm very proud to say that my father and his entire family devoted their lives to serving our country on both land and sea. But nearly half a million American soldiers lost their lives as well on those World War II battlefields. Today, many of them would have been grandparents or great grandparents. To those great American men and women, we remember you every day, and we carry you in our hearts, always. I hope you'll stay with us for this one-of-a-kind Memorial Day celebration. We will hear directly from some of America's greatest living heroes 
veterans from all over the country, as well as their loved ones honoring them on this special day. I want to thank the Lincoln Way Marching Band from New Lenox, Illinois, for opening the show. And there are more patriotic performances on the way, including Grammy Award-winning singer-songwriter Tori Kelly and the lively a cappella group Pop Kids. But first, I'd like to introduce Rishi Sharma, a notable young American filmmaker who is dedicated to collecting the stories from every living combat veteran of World War II in the United States. The stories of strength and hope that Rishi has worked laboriously on are deeply inspiring. And we are so honored to share just a few of them with you right now. Hello, everyone. I hope you're all well. My name is Rishi Sharma, and it is an honor for me to be with you all here today. Over the last four years, I've made it my personal mission to interview every single World War II combat veteran of the Allied countries in order to preserve their stories of valor and sacrifice for future generations to come. As we commemorate Memorial Day and the 75th anniversary of the end of World War II, the stories of those brave young men we lost in the worst war in humanity resonate even more so today than ever. It is my privilege be able to share some of these stories with you. This is a photo of uh, Lieutenant Edward Roos, originally from Englewood, New Jersey. He was my platoon leader on Okinawa. Uh, he was killed at uh, Sugarloaf Hill. Uh, the situation was that he uh, was attempting to uh, keep a tank from getting uh, too far away from uh, infantry protection. And uh, he went out to uh, uh, talk through the telephone to the tank captain. And uh, he was injured twice going out and again severely in the abdomen when he came back and uh, he succumbed to his injuries. He was later awarded the Navy Cross for his uh, incredible courage at, uh, at Chigarov Hill in Okinawa. Well, he seemed to be a natural leader. He, uh, he knew his men uh, and uh, he dealt with them with a, with a certain amount of equality, you might call it, but you knew that he was in charge, uh, knew by his demeanor. We started out one morning, it was a nice sunny day. We were going up the hill, as I said, toward this village of, of Electra. And we were told to stop about 10, 10 a.m. in the morning. And so we were lying there on the ground, waiting to be told to get up and go again. And uh, I was under one of the very few trees in that particular area with our uh, top sergeant in, in our platoon. And my uh, buddy, Leo Torrey, was up the hill under a pile of big rocks. And he hollered at me, hey, Doc, I've got a very good, safe looking place up here. Why don't you come up with me? And I said, uh, Lee, I've got a nice, one of the most shady places in the whole area here. I'm going to stay here. It'll be OK. And he called me again, and he called me a third time. And finally, I said, all right, shut up. I'll come up. And I got up, and I walked up the hill all the way and got down behind the stones that he had. And I no longer had sat down. Then we all heard a cannon firing. And we could hear the shell coming, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. And I don't know for certain whether it was a, the shell itself was an actual explosive air in the air or whether it hit the tree, but it exploded in the tree that I was lying under with, with the sergeant. And it killed him instantly. It just tore up the ground. And I jumped up immediately and started running back down. And, and Tori said, Doc, stay here. I said, I know Bob's been hit. I have to go. I 
And I got down there and he had just been shattered like the ground had. He, he was hit in the head many times and all over his body. And thank heaven he didn't have much pain, I'm sure. He was a terrific guy. And he had been, of course, in charge of our company, uh, our platoon, when they made the invasion uh, in Salerno. And he earned a distinguished service cross for his work there. Rigopoulos was his name. He was in my platoon. He was with me in the mountains of Italy and he was in the, in the river crossing. And, and I was a um, particular interested in him because like with me, uh, I believe his parents were Greek immigrants like my parents. And I believe that John Rigopoulos, like me, was a, was a born, born in the US. He and I would talk about things and I felt a special attachment with him. He made it across the river and he was charging forward with some other guys in a group and a machine gun fire opened up on him and he got hit in the hand. And he came running out of there and he raised his hand and he says, look, I got me a purple heart. And he raised his hand in the air, I write this in the book. I got me a purple heart. And he was hit by a machine gun, but a little later, before he got to the dike, a machine bullet killed him, and he died. He'd never seen such brand of bravery and heroism as the men who were charging into those, into those machine guns. I just want to say happy Memorial Day to uh, all of the men and women out there in all of the armed forces, all of the various branches, no matter what your MOS, no matter why you joined, no matter where you joined, I just wanna say happy Memorial Day. I also wanna take um, a minute to uh, remember uh, all of those fallen soldiers, sailors, Marines, people from various um, branches that, that gave their lives and sacrificed so much so that we can have the freedom we have today. Um, you know, I think about my grandfather who was in the army, my father who was in the Navy, and uh, I've always been a big believer that giving service, you know, uh, is an important thing, you know what I'm saying? Uh, doing right and uh, being the best you could be. Uh, that was the example they set, they set for me. So I just wanna say much love to all of you. Stay strong, um, keep believing, and know that we truly, truly, truly appreciate you. Thank you. Happy Memorial Day. My country, tears of the sweet land of liberty, of the icy.
few weeks, we sat down with veterans spanning generations in different wars to speak with them about the importance of Memorial Day and who they're honoring today. These moving and inspirational conversations drive home the importance and fundamental meaning of this day. My name is Dan Nevins. My name was Leroy Plogger. I'm Joseph Michael Trevino. My name was Deborah Lewis. I'm retired Sergeant Donna Pratt. I served in the United States Army from 1991 until I retired in 2006. I was made a sergeant after I got out of the hospital. I went to Europe as a corporal. I ended up serving with the 8th Infantry Division. I served in Vietnam as a sergeant, crew chief of a Quad 50 machine gun crew and twin 40 millimeter cannons. I was bound up troop convoy. That meant I drove troops, ammunition, visiting dignitaries. My last duty station was Fort Stewart in Georgia. While I was there at that unit, I deployed to Operation Iraqi Freedom 5. Also before that, I was in the conflict of Desert Storm back in 1990. Memorial Day is an incredible holiday and actually an amazing time to celebrate with friends and family. But before the celebration starts, I take a very conscious and intentional effort in silent reflection to honor all those who made the ultimate sacrifice. And then I have the barbecues and spend time with my family and am around the people that I love and care about and knowing that the reason I have that opportunity is because of those who made the ultimate sacrifice. Uh, it uh, reminds me of all the men who have, uh, and ladies who have given their uh, lives uh, uh, for this country. It's something to remember those that gave their all. And we're lucky. In society today, we think about it as different things, whether they're major sales for cars or for furniture or what have you. But at the end of the day, really, it's, it's an opportunity to stop and reflect, uh, to remember those who served and came home, but most especially to remember and celebrate uh, those who paid the ultimate price. I'd love for people to join with me today in honoring Sergeant First Class Michael Adelini. Mike was my platoon sergeant. He was tough as nails and the hardest working human being I've ever met. We served together during Operation Iraqi Freedom II. The Marines had already been entrenched in Fallujah for three days fighting fierce battle. And we got intelligence that some of the insurgency was coming to our area of operations. So we drew up a battle plan to meet them where they were. Mike should have been the NCOIC, but it was me. And it was me because he had been suffering and fighting through a protruding abdominal hernia for months before we finally got wind of it and said, hey, you had to get that fixed, and he agreed. In the morning leaving for that mission, it was Mike that was driving my vehicle. Mike shouldn't have been driving. He was a platoon sergeant. Platoon sergeants don't drive vehicles. But who he was was the person that if his men were gonna be in harm's way, he was gonna be right there with us for as long as he could be, at least to drop us off to our dismount point before he turned around to go catch his flight to get his surgery and then headed out for that operation. My whole life turned upside down. We hit an improvised explosive device that sent our vehicle about six feet in the air in a ball of fire. And as a result of that explosion, I ultimately lost both legs below the knee. I lived with a traumatic brain injury. 
had to start over. But I remember as the dust started to settle from that blast, I looked forward to the driver's compartment in my Humvee and I knew instantly that starting first class, Mike Adelini had made the ultimate sacrifice. Growing up, I knew that uh, I had six uncles that served in World War II, but only five came home. Andrew and Joe and Diego and Gilbert and Junior came home. Mario Castillo was buried in Luxembourg. The uncle I never met, but if he was anything like the other uncles that I met, uh, he was a great guy. And I, I regret that uh, no member of the family has been able to travel to where he lays, to be able to touch the earth where he is buried and has been buried for 75 years. But we're grateful for him and we're grateful for his service and are grateful for his sacrifice. I would love to honor my dad, Ira Farmer Sr. He was in the conflict during World War II. My uncle, Henry Dotson, he was in Vietnam. And also two very special people that were my brothers and sisters in my unit. Corporal Julia Diaz, born August 6, 1986. She was a young soldier full of life. Corporal Diaz paid the ultimate sacrifice doing an Iraq training exercise. Also, my brother, Staff Sergeant David Colgate Hawkins. No matter what was going on, you can always count on Colgate to give you a wonderful smile. Uh, a week before I was to return to my company, my company was wiped out in a battle in Germany. And when I got back, I had all new men. When I entered the service, the only ones that went, females that went overseas were nurses and they were behind the lines. Every month I went and took all the tests and I wanted, but they wouldn't let me go because they said being a troop convoy, I'd have to be at the front and females don't go to the front. I'd love for everyone that's listening to be the leader in their group, in their celebration to take the time to raise the awareness to everyone on what the day means. Uh, I like the idea that uh, wherever you happen to be on Memorial Day, uh, that if you bend a knee, that at, in and of itself, that place uh, becomes a memorial and a place where you can celebrate, where you can remember, and you can thank people for having paid the ultimate sacrifice. I was badly injured, but I'm alive and well now. I hope now that every German that I shot at enjoys the same privilege. I hope he recovered and got to go back to his family. Because of the times that we're in, continue after all of this is over to stay together to help us through no matter what adversity we go through, that we know we all can stand together. So whether it's a toast or a moment of silence or a cheer, whatever fits your culture and your family, whatever that is, just do it. Because the people and the families that are missing their loved ones, they're celebrating too, but their hearts are full of the memories of the ones that they lost. Hey everybody, it's Rob Lowe here. My family and I wanna take a minute to wish everybody a happy Memorial Day. We are so grateful to the men and women of the armed forces and their families who sacrifice and serve our country and make our country what it is. Um, I'm proud to be a son of the American Revolution and to trace my family back to the battles of Bunker Hill and uh, the Battle of Trenton. So I have a real affinity and affection for, for this holiday. And I hope that everybody takes a minute um, to remember what Memorial Day is really about. It's great that we are able to be with our friends and family to the extent that we can and have our picnics and our hot dogs. But really, this is about honoring the sacrifice of the people in the armed services. 
and uh, they have my great appreciation. And I hope you join me in giving them some prayers and some hugs and some air kisses today. Hi, everybody. I hope you're having a meaningful Memorial Day. My name is Dr. Kimberly Gilmore, and I'm lead historian for the History Channel. And I'm so proud to be here today to join with Ancestry to shine a light on the importance of World War II and all of those who have served us so well. I have the pleasure today of being able to interview Dr. Deborah Josephson. Her great uncle played an extraordinary role in World War II. He was one of the first American GIs to go into the small country of Luxembourg during World War II, and he became known as an unknown soldier. I think we've all heard about unknown soldiers, but very few people know the real stories behind these heroes. So Deborah, thank you so much for being here. Your great uncle seems like he was such an incredible person. Can you tell us a little bit about his story and how he came to join the armed forces? Sure. Well, my great uncle, Hyman Josephson, he was the youngest son of Romanian Jewish immigrants and a first generation American. He grew up in Middletown, New York and distinguished himself uh, academically and athletically. Uh, he got the highest score on a, an exam and entered Cornell University at the age of 15 and attained a law degree. So he entered, he was an engineer and a lawyer and then enlisted voluntarily in World War II. He was in the 85th Cavalry Reconnaissance Unit and was the advanced car and as such was the first car to breach uh, the, the border between Belgium and Luxembourg. Deborah, can you tell us a little bit about what happened once he entered there and um, and then the story about how he was acknowledged by, the, even though they didn't know his identity, how was he acknowledged in, in Luxembourg? So Hyman's car was the first car. He was a car commander of the 85th Cavalry Reconnaissance Unit. Essentially, he was like the escort car because uh, the Prince and Duke of Luxembourg were returning to Luxembourg City. So as they were passing through France and Belgium, they were being greeted by all the villagers who were so happy that their, their countries were being liberated from the Nazis. The war was not yet over and there was a hidden Wehrmacht cannon which fired at him just as he was approaching the town's flour mill. It sets the car aflame and he cannot escape. Within days, the scouts and villagers erected a makeshift memorial with flowers and candles. Now, they didn't know who he was, but they all saw it. In fact, they have it on film. Since October 1947, a monument was unveiled to the first American soldier to die for the liberation of Luxembourg. In fact, that's emblazoned on one side of the monument. The other side says, and we never forget, mere vergessen yet in Luxembourgeois. Wow, that's amazing. And then how was the connection made um, between that monument to the unknown soldier and the identity of your great uncle? Well, uh, again, he nobody really knew his identity until uh, the 1980s. That's when battle site tours became popular. During one of these tours, a couple from New Jersey was on, on a tour and uh, on the same tour happened to be the gunner who was in the same car as my great uncle, Cyril Mayrose. When they went through the battle and saw this, the, the tour and saw this monument, Cyril Mayrose said, hey, I know that guy. That was my car commander, Hyman Josephson. And after that, um, the, a group in Luxembourg dedicated to studying the Battle of the Bulge conspired to find, along with uh, this couple from New Jersey, the relatives of Hyman Josephson. And they found the uh, Middletown, New York, the same house that he had lived in was still in the family, and they originally contacted my aunt because she had the title to the house at that moment. That's incredible. It's really amazing that all of those pieces got put together. And I know that, you know, today is a day that throughout our country, we're remembering those like your great uncle who served and gave the ultimate sacrifice. Is there a similar kind of remembrance in Luxembourg? Um, do you know much about how they celebrate Memorial Day or remember the, these milestones? Sure. Well, Luxembourg itself has an American military cemetery in Ham, but for them, uh, their big celebrations are during their liberation, uh, which is September 9th and 10th. 
they're still very thankful because the Americans managed to keep them on the map. They have parades during this Liberation Day, and uh, in particular at the Hyman Josephson Memorial Monument in Patanj, the Duke of Luxembourg comes every five years and lays a wreath along with other dignitaries, including the U.S. ambassador. They've managed to maintain this tradition consistently through the years since 1945. They, in fact, even opened up a museum this past year so that they don't forget in every generation the importance of the war and of uh, liberation. Why has it been important for you to tell this story and make sure that more people know about the history of the unknown soldier and the history of people like your great uncle who have served? Well, my great uncle, although he was an exceptional individual, and there's no doubt about that, he was an American soldier, just like anybody, uh, who volunteered and was part of the greatest generation. And in this time where we face despots, it's quite important to realize service, uh, especially um, in times like we are facing now. And, uh, you know, he could have easily have gotten out of the war but I, I believe that he uh, probably realized that there was something to fight for. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you so much for sharing this story. You've brought attention to the very important story of your great uncle. And I think this will inspire many people to dig into their own past and their own history and learn more about those who have served in their families. So thank you for being part of this and for joining together with Ancestry to shine a light on this very important history. Hey, Mario Lopez here wanting to wish a very happy Memorial Day to those who are watching at home. This holiday is, of course, all about commemorating the men and women in uniform who gave their lives to secure our freedom. Having family members in the service, it holds a special place in my heart. And this day is such an important holiday to honor every year, no matter where you are. So a big thank you to Ancestry History Channel, the Wounded Warrior Project, of which I'm fortunate to be a partner. And of course, to all the amazing veterans who have shared their stories today. Stay safe, everyone, and God bless. Hey everyone, it's Tori Kelly, and I just wanted to say happy Memorial Day and a huge thank you to all of our military veterans. This song is dedicated to you. Oh, beautiful for a spacious sky, for amber waves of grain. For purple mountains, majesty above the fruits it lay. Thank you all so much for joining us for the 2020 Memorial Day Parade of Heroes. I'd like to thank Rishi Sharma and the stories of strength he shared with us. Thank you to our partner, History, as well as the Wounded Warrior Project, the Greatest Generations Foundation, Heroes of the Second World War, TAPS, Jewish War Veterans, and Combined Arms for making this possible. And also thank you to the Lincoln Way Marching Band and Akapop Kids and Tori Kelly for those incredible performances. And of course, 
Our deepest gratitude goes to our veterans whose inspiring stories remind us what Memorial Day is all about. To the Gold Star families who have lost loved ones on battlefields, we offer you our gratitude for your sacrifice and we pray for your peace. And to the men and women of our armed forces, we thank you, we salute you, and we love you. Something that one of our veterans said really stuck with me, even though this is a solemn day, it is still a day for celebration. Those whom we commemorate would want us to be with friends and family today. The freedom that they won is the prize you and I get to celebrate every day. Before we end, let's join together in a moment of silence to honor and reflect on the lives of the brave American men and women who have died in defense of their country and ours, the United States of America. 